Good morning, everyone. My name is Carol Distel, and I am with the Discover Manufacturing Group. Uh, we welcome you to Discover Manufacturing Week, and it looks like everybody's starting their Tuesday morning pretty well. Looks like we had some good results. People are printing pretty well. So thank you so much. We have a packed schedule for today. We'll be taking an hour of your time. We have four amazing manufacturers here that we're gonna speak to um, and learn more about what they do and their opportunities opportunities that are here. So each of the panelists will be speaking for about 10 minutes. Um, following all the panelists will be doing a question and answers. So as you can see on your toolbar, there is a uh, question and answer box. If you do have a question, please put that in there and we will be answering that at the end. Um, for those of you, um, we will be um, giving out two uh, gift cards to $25 e, uh, Amazon gift cards. So if you um, put a question in there, you'll be put into a drawing to win one of those gift cards. Um, let's see, at the end of the webinar as well, we also have a survey for you to participate in. So that will happen once you close out of the webinar, the survey will pop up. Um, it should take you no more than a few minutes to do that. And um, as well, everybody who completes the survey will be put in a drawing for a gift card as well. So with that, I would like to get started with our first presenter. We have Steve from um, NN, NN Mobile Solutions. So good morning, Steve. Thanks for joining us today. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be on, uh, on, on Manufacturing Week with the crew, and I, uh, I look to share a little bit about our business. Sound good? Thank you. That sounds awesome. We would love it. So we'll let you get started. So my, my primary interest is to help you understand uh, how in manufacturing um, you can connect your experience in high school to the opportunities that are um, in industry and manufacturing beyond uh, high school and beyond, uh, you know, college career or um, technical school or any of this sort. So uh, just a little bit about our company. We are NN Inc. There are two divisions of us, NN Mobile Solutions and Power Solutions. Uh, we are across aerospace and defense. We're across uh, automotive, electrical, general industrial, and some medical elements. So um, this is our headquarter building. It's down in um, Charlotte, North Carolina. And uh, just gonna move through and give you a little bit more detail about us organizationally. We're all across the globe. We're actually located in North America and South America, Europe, and uh, in Asia. So um, uh, 30 plus facilities, if you look at uh, our entire footprint, and we do that so that we can deliver our parts to where our customers are manufacturing uh, their product. Um, hopefully down in uh, your visible um, panel view here, you should be able to see one of our employees. Obed's going to join us in a moment. He's out on the shop floor. So I'm just going to um, highlight him for a moment and, uh, and, and you'll see the activity that he's doing, uh, you know, just on his Tuesday morning routine. So as I mentioned before, we do have the aerospace and defense. Uh, we engage with uh, mini sats, satellites, and uh, some of the propulsion systems that put not only planes, but also space shuttles uh, and rockets uh, in outer space. We also focus on electrical connectivity, so the home and business and industrial. And then uh, you say, well, and then mobile solutions, why mobile solutions? And we are, uh, we provide components to the automotive industry, um, but more than just automotive, we have different opportunities and different um, uh, components to go on various elements of mobility Right. So whether it's autonomous or whether it's, um, you know, light scooter and, and light power and in, uh, internal combustion engine all the way up through the, the diesel and the V8 and everything else. So some other things that we're involved in, uh, you know, power tools and air conditioning units, uh, industrial shafts, motor shafts, um, ATV steering, things like that. So just a pretty good variety of components. And uh, when, you, when you think about machining, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different elements that go into machining. Uh, our primary focus for machining is using bar stock, right, which you see on the left of your screen. Uh, and it comes in various diameters. And then we use pieces of technology, uh, you know, like you see over here on the right, this is a Torno screw machine. Uh, we acquired two of these um, late 2019. 
Um, at the time, there were only 103 of these produced in the entire world, and we have two of them sitting in our shop here in Kentwood. Um, but the complexity of this machine allows us to do to the complexity of the parts on the bottom. And this, uh, this part over here on the left, it's actually um, for one of our customers here on the fuel and transmission line. And Obed's going to highlight a version of this product on the floor as well. I want to just briefly talk about our opportunity to learn and grow, right? So we have uh, an ability for an employee to come in as an apprentice uh, or start in our secondary uh, uh, positions and really develop and grow with their education. And, and we believe that technical skill and educational attainment um, are going to be required whether you go directly to school after high school, whether you go to directly to college or, um, or you, you join uh, the industry and start working your way through. We have an apprenticeship that runs uh, class run one day, one day a week, and they work four days a week, so 40 hours a week plus a day of school. That's ran through Grand Rapids Community College, but it's all our employees together in a cohort. And then we also have the AMP curriculum model, which is uh, 30 hours a week and then two days of uh, going to school to attain your associate's degree quicker. Um, it also leads you the opportunity to move towards a bachelor's degree while we pay for your education. We also have a program where you can act you can enhance your pay for skill is what we call it, where you can take additional coursework on your own time and give yourself a 50 cent raise with every skill that you complete. So we have some individuals that are earning their, you know, their current wage plus a $2.50 uh, $2 an hour increase every hour that they work. I think it's important to point out um, what our employees are like, right? So our employees are often very curious um, they're mechanical in nature or have a mechanical aptitude. Um, they like to be a part of a team and challenge technically. And, you know, as I illustrated, the new technology and Obed will show you that in a moment. And then the other things are, you know, they like to have good hobbies, hunting, fishing, working out, being out on the road, mountain biking, whatever. And often, you know, working on their homes, cars, motorcycles, boats, whichever, you know, particular thing they need. And then, uh, you know, whether it's listening to books, music, podcasts, things, things like that. Um, just a lot of fun activities from our group. And this is Obed, you'll see him on the floor, like I said, in a moment. Um, he joined in 2013, um, completed his apprenticeship and his associate's degree. And our apprenticeship actually articulates credits towards an associate's degree. So he's currently studying his bachelor's degree and we've paid for his entire education through this process. Um, and his goal is to complete his engineering degree this coming uh, 2021, December of 21. So. With that, I just want to highlight that, you know, tomorrow, right, as you're sitting in high school today, tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it. And so your ability to think forward and maybe be uh, entertained or influenced by the opportunities manufacturing has is our desire. So with that, um, I'm going to stop sharing. Good morning. Um, my name is Obed Santos. I've been working for AutoCAM Precision Components and then Inc for uh, about seven years, since uh, May 2013. Um, I tried different jobs, and um, I wanted to try something more exciting, something that would really challenge me to uh, develop my skills and accumulate more knowledge. And um, I actually became um, at a different place. Before I came here, I, I worked as a quality analyst and also as a supervisor in the customer service industry. But something was missing, something, it did not make me happy. I didn't feel like that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So trying to find a different job, someone noticed that I had decent, and noticed decent, they were not the greatest, math, mathematics skills and mechanical skills. And I was a very proactive person. I, I, I'm always a proactive person. And somebody noticed that and they suggested I should work for AutoCAM. And I said, why not? I'll give it a try. At that point in time in my life, I did not know that I was about to start a very exciting career in the manufacturing field. So I came to AutoCAM, like I said, in 2013, um, got enrolled into their, their apprenticeship program. In 2015, in December, I was able to complete my apprenticeship program. I kept on going to school and 
in 2018, I was able to obtain my um, associate's degree in tooling and manufacturing technologies at GRCC. Um, and notice, up to this point, and ever since the beginning, my employer, AutoCam, was covering all the costs, 100% of the costs of my education. And on top of that, they also pay for 50% uh, of my book uh, costs. Currently, what am I doing currently? I'm actually attending Paris State University. I'm working on my Bachelor of Science degree in uh, engineering in manufacturing technology at Paris State University. Um, it's very exciting and my employer continues to pay, so I continue to do it. So what am I doing now? What, am I, what I'm doing now is I'm being part of a team who has started working on a new project for AutoCAM. We recently, we recently started making this part called the sleeve. I'm gonna show it to you guys in one second. We are currently working on this new part and we work at it from scratch. It's a regular sleeve and what it is, it's basically a part that looks like a cylinder almost, but it has a through hole that you guys are able to see. On top of that, this part has 16 strategically positioned holes, cross holes throughout the, the OD of the part. And that's what we're doing right now. We currently have this machine over here, which is a, uh, a horn machine. And what we're doing is, um, we are uh, honing the idea of the part. And as you can see, you know, I'm just gonna get it going real quick because I know it's a, it's a quick fix. Um, so what we're doing here is basically like I was saying, we were honing the part, we we're honing the parts and we are We are honing this part. So I'm being part of this project right now. We bought this beautiful machine, which is a honing machine. We bought it um, for $750,000 and I'm being part of this project now. And I um, got the opportunity to work with very skilled people and very talented people who are always supporting me, always trying to help me out to succeed. I'm being successful so far, as you can see. So. How is it that my education has um, helped me throughout my journey as a student? Well, believe it or not, every day that I come to work, I use anything, all the skills that I have from um, blueprint reading, you know, to metallurgy, to uh, uh, GDNT, to all kinds of uh, classes. And I actually keep my physics book here. This machine is very, very technical. It measures, in, in real time, it measures actual speed. These are our tools. It measures for actual speed, for torque, and other factors in order for the machine to determine that this is a good part, okay? I enjoy every day that I come to work. And call me crazy if you like, but even on the weekend, my wife actually calls me crazy when I tell her I can't wait to go up to work, and even though it's the weekend. One of my rewards, one of the biggest rewards I've had so far is that last year I had to travel to Europe. My employer paid for everything. We had to go and do a machine runoff for this machine, okay? And we spent a few weeks in Switzerland. So I am encouraging everyone to get into the manufacturing field because that's where everything, all the opportunities and possibilities are. Thank you very much. Thank you, Obed. It's wonderful to see. I appreciate your enthusiasm too. We learned so much there. So, um, should we, Steve, would you want to go to that video next and, and show your video? All right. So, Anne, if you can roll the video for us and we will end off on NN Inc. Mobile Solutions with their video. Hey, good morning. My name is Steve Hedice. I'm the training director for NN Mobile Solutions AutoCam. We're here in beautiful Kentwood, Michigan, right out by the Gerald R. Ford Airport. I'm going to show you what we do inside. We are a manufacturer of automotive 
and industrial components that are delivered across the globe. Annually, we make over 300 million parts here in Michigan alone. The majority of the components that we make here in our facility are safety critical components, meaning that on vehicles, if you start, stop, or shift, or steer, we have something that is likely involved in the mechanics of that process occurring in your vehicle. And all of those functions are absolutely vital to perform without flaw to keep you safe on the roads. We offer tuition reimbursement programs through our apprenticeship model or college classes or even technical coursework offered within industry. My name is Ovid Santos and I've been working here for seven years. I was accepted into the apprenticeship program and then uh, I uh, was able to complete that thanks to uh, my employer who uh, helped me and supported me throughout the all the way. And, um, that's how I became a machinist, and that's how I got to uh, do what I do nowadays. It's important that each one of our people stay current with technology so that we understand the opportunities to serve our customer better in the future. Hey, thanks for coming. We hope you enjoyed the video, and hopefully we'll be able to have you in person sometime soon. But until then, stay safe, and we hope that you can enjoy Manufacturing Week. Awesome. Thank you so much. So let's, I, that was exciting. And let's move on. We got Christy White coming in from AutoCam Medical. So good morning, Christy. Oh, good morning. Thanks for having me. We're glad uh, you're I, here. Well, I appreciate that we're putting together the Zoom call and video because I really miss having tours on site. So hopefully someday soon we'll get everybody here and present where I can do a live tour, but we'll make do today and um, we'll start with some of my slides, if you will, Carol, and we'll, um, I can talk through a little bit about the business and the benefits to working for AutoCam Medical. Awesome. There we go. So AutoCam Medical, you may have recognized that Obed and Steve have referenced AutoCam as well. So our owner, his name's John Kennedy. Um, he once owned the automo AutoCam Automotive and then he sold to NN. So we still have a shared name. So if you look out my window here, you'll actually see Steve's office and you'll see Obed there hard at work. <laughs> and um, so with that, John Kennedy moved all the way across the street to form AutoCam Medical. Um, so you'll see some similarities between what Steve just shared and uh, what AutoCam Medical has to offer, especially the, the shared name with AutoCam. So again, my name is Christy White and I'm an HR manager at AutoCam Medical. Uh, 20 long years ago, I attended Michigan State uh, to secure my undergrad in business. Um, and then I was an intern at Smith's Aerospace, which was in Grand Rapids, close to the airport. And they kindly um, paid for my continued education. So I took full advantage of that. And I went to school at Western for my master's degree. So that's one thing that I am promoting today to all the students that are on the call is definitely be a part of a company that's going to invest in your future and continue that education. So I received my master's in learning and development from Western um, and I spent a good 15 years at GE Aviation. So Smith's Aerospace got acquired by GE Aviation and I went through the acquisition and spent a good 15 years with GE, traveling the world and learning the aviation industry. Uh, as you know, GE is so large, there's over 300,000 employees there, and, um, and my niche is really with entrepreneurs. And so I found the opportunity with AutoCam Medical um, in that our leader, John Kennedy, is a true entrepreneur at heart, and so it just fit for me to leave GE, and um, I made the choice to come to AutoCam Medical. So um, with that, my role is all things HR, and right now it's really heavy on the COVID and making sure that our employees are safe here at work and healthy, um, but we also are doing a lot of recruiting, and it's always been that way since the day I started here. Um, and so Steve and I fight often over good talent because we sit so close to each other. Uh, so we uh, definitely have a fun relationship trying to recruit to our area and we're happy whether you join the NN team or the AutoCam medical team because we do have such a great uh, partnership. So our mission statement at AutoCam medical, we are a contract manufacturer um, for medical device. So we are all things medical. 
in the background of the slide that you see, you'll see a picture of our shop where we have a very high number of CNC equipment. What you see there would be a, a Citizen Swiss lathe. Um, and that picture actually in the background there is for a product group um, for drill bits. Um, so I brought one with me today. I will try to give you a close up view of what you'll see here, but um, to give you a good sense of the product, we have such a large variety and a high mix of products that we produce here and primarily metals, stainless steels, aluminums, titaniums. Um, and our goal is to be the best in the world. So we are a global company and we continue to expand. So our culture, one thing when considering what to do next um, with your career and your future is to really not only look at industry and look at the benefits, but really choose a company that has a great culture. And hence why I'm here because of the entrepreneur spirit, but we are a family owned company um, that really invest in continue education. Um, and then in addition to that, a lot of continuous improvement. So we will preach and talk all day about the Deming philosophy in areas that we can work on continuous improvement. And every employee here is expected um, to take part in that continuous improvement effort. Um, similar to Steve and, um, and N, when it comes to um, continued education, we have programs partnered with GRCC and Grand Valley and others um, to make sure that our employees are getting the skill sets that they desire to be able to grow and develop. So in North America, we have the Kentwood facility, which is where I'm based today. And then where I used to travel before COVID, right now we're on a travel pause. I used to travel to Plymouth and to Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Um, and their sites look very similar to what we have here in Kentwood. Our Kentwood facility, beautiful renovated facility, um, certainly looks none other than just beautiful white floors, um, very bright and clean. So I kind of grew up with my father working at General Motors, um, working in a plant that was very dirty and greasy and dark. So that was my impression of manufacturing. And then I was in, introduced to AutoCam Medical and I was wowed by how beautiful of a facility that we have. And that is one reason why candidates come to work for us because it is very clean. Um, so that when they get done with their long shift, they can leave and run their errands and not go home, you know, covered in filth. So we are a large facility, 89,000 square feet, and we continue to expand. So I've been with the company now for two years um, and we have grown 20% year over year, invested a lot into our CapEx or into new equipment, and we continue to do so. Right now, here in Kentwood, we have 184 employees, and um, based off our projected sales for 2021, I need to put my foot on the gas and start hiring because we are going to grow significant, significantly again in the year ahead. So um, I'm, I'm really looking for talent to come and join our team. Um, so here, when I talk about the high mix of products, I showed you a drill bit, but again, we have thousands of different products that we produce. We do have implants as well. Everything that we produce is used um, in surgeries, whether that be um, for trauma or for elective. Um, you know, right now, elective surgeries are on delay because of COVID, such as uh, cataract surgery. And so that has certainly um, been an impact to our business. Um, so we're hoping that those elective surgeries pick back up now that we have a vaccine here. And then with that, but we do have a lot of product that's used for trauma as well. And that's where I list the parts that are listed there, the drill bits, the bone screws, the implants, and so forth. So everything that we do here is very small product and it's precision machining. And we also do the secondary operations as well. So after the part is produced, whether it be from a lathe or a mill, a grinder, et cetera, we have secondary operations in which there's 12 secondary operations. And that would be washing, passivating, buffing, bead blasting, laser marking the parts so that we can ship our parts to our customer. Um, and you know, our customers would be somebody that you would be, uh, have heard of would be like a striker medical down in Kalamazoo or a Medtronic. So all, all those customers are giving us a design and as a contract manufacturer, 
we are taking that design and we're building it from start to finish and sending that back to our OEMs. So as I said, we're a global facility. So we do have a site in Brazil and China. Um, hopefully someday soon, I'll be able to travel back to those facilities. We are certainly up and coming on the global front. So they're much smaller than the Kentwood, Plymouth and Murfreesboro facilities, but we are global and are hoping to continue that expansion. All markets are served. So anywhere from dental to spine, to hip, to shoulder, elbow, if you have any surgeries in need, um, we probably have a part that could, could help put you on the mend. So we serve several markets there. Some pictures of the product. So as I showed you, we have the drill bits. Um, scary, because you would find something very similar in your garage, you know, something that you would use for home maintenance is also used in surgery. Um, and then on the right, that is our tool for cataract surgery. Um, and with that, we do do some laser welding in addition. We produce about 30,000 parts um, for that cataract surgery tool. Um, and I, like I said, I'm hoping that those elective surgeries go back up so we can produce more of that tool. We also do some cutting tools as well. You see parts that we produce that you don't want used on you, <laughs> but, but thankful that they're there in the case you have a need. I think we have some further pictures ahead here of the other products that we produce. There's the bone screws. You know, interesting, we actually are exploring getting into the veterinary side as well. Um, so we are finding that people are willing to spend more on their dogs than they are on themselves. So we will explore the veterinary side as we uh, continue to build the business. And those are some of the implants um, that we produce as well. So it goes to show that we are a very high mix of parts here, um, which really can keep things complicated, but from um, an employee perspective, they love having that variety of parts to work on. So they're not working on the same thing day in, day out. We have several different products here that we produce. So with that, what I want to end with is a video from our apprentice class. And um, this video will capture what we call um, our AMP lab or our advanced manufacturing lab. And it's located at our Western Michigan University campus, downtown Grand Rapids. So kind of next to Van Andel Museum there. Um, so we have a, the second floor um, that's full of manual CNC equipment. So we've got the mills and the lathes and our instructor, Andy Beach, that teaches our apprentices. We have two classes going right now. And every June, I kick off a new class with 14 new students. They go to school for two years well working here at AutoCAM Medical. So it's, um, you continue to work, but we'll pay for school. Um, we do pay for school in full and hope that you continue that advanced education. But I wanted to give you some testimonies of the employees that we have working here at AutoCAM Medical that are currently taking part in our apprentice program. My name is Tyler Willis. I uh, started working for AutoCAM back in August of 2017 and I uh, got into this year's program when it started up uh, early January of this year. Before I was involved with AutoCAM in this program, uh, I had no prior experience with machining. I had been in a couple of different fields from door-to-door -door sales to the automotive industry to transportation industry, but I heard about AutoCAM and uh, the machining program and thought it'd be a good move. Hi, my name is Luis Martinez and I've been associated with AutoCAM since January 8th of 2018. Before I was interested into becoming a machinist, I was actually a dairy farmer. I was milking cows, you know, working out there in fields and tractors and all that. I went back to get my GED and my teacher actually mentioned to me that there was a program. I started looking into it and actually went for it. My name is Jarita Rosebert and I've been in the program through AutoCAM um, for a year now. I started doing um, manufacturing, just general labor work. I was told about the CNC machining classes and someone thought that I would really love it. Hi, I'm Andy Beach. I'm the instructor for the GRCC AutoCAM apprenticeship program. This education is real important to machinists nowadays because it's been lost through the need for production, need to get work done. New hirees are put on a CNC machine. They're shown how to hit the go button, how to inspect a part, but they don't learn how to become machinist. So what we've developed here in the apprenticeship program is an opportunity for new machinists to come into the trade to learn those basic skills that's lost in today's machining world. At the beginning of their education, they start out on the manual equipment, learning all those operations that you don't use as much in the workplace nowadays, but it is the foundation 
of a machinist skill set. They do blueprint reading, they do math, we do metallurgy, we do metrology. They take those skills back to work with them every single day. And then when those manual G-code skills are developed, then they get into the master camp. They're learning setups and multi-axis. They learn all their feeds and speeds, and they take all of those manual machining skills that they learned, which is a lot of sound, touch, and feel, and they start applying the math, and then it becomes science for them at that point. So in the future, the future of AutoCam and the future of industry, these machinists will be the leaders. They have that education background, they have the experience background, and they will be leading our machining world and our skilled trades. If you're interested in getting into the program, you can go to AutoCam Medical and you can apply for a job. We'd love to have you here. Awesome. Thank you, Christy. That was You're really, welcome. really Thank well you. done. Appreciate that. So, well, next, Chris, I'm going to take you off of, uh, there we go. We see Chris. Good morning. How are you this morning? Great. How are you? Good. Chris is joining us from Steelcase. So tell us a little bit more about Steelcase and what you do there. Yeah, sure. Well, first of all, welcome everybody to Discover Manufacturing. I have the honor of presenting on Steelcase. Uh, my name is Chris Bardeja. I'm the uh, Global uh, Vice President for Lean Quality here at the company. Um, Steelcase was uh, founded right here in Grand Rapids in 1912. So we have been around for 108 years and we continue to be the, uh, the market leader in our industry, which is uh, office furniture. So uh, I'll just start with our slides. I'll tell you more about Steelcase. We'll share a video to give you insights into what our company culture is after. And then uh, Tracy Curdy is joining us too. I'll tell you a little bit about Tracy in a minute and, and she'll be uh, supporting the presentation too. So as I mentioned, we're the, the world leading manufacturer of furniture, architecture and technology products. Uh, we have the largest production capacity in the entire industry. And our purpose, we exist to unlock human promise by transforming work, worker and workplace. So. Um, we're going through that right now with work from home. A lot of uh, people are working out of their homes right now, and uh, we're at the forefront of translating things that people are used to in their office to helping them work in their, uh, their home environments too. So uh, we do a lot there. You're starting to see some profile of our products. There's a, a good mix of different types of products. And if we go to the next slide, I'll share a little bit more about uh, myself and Tracy and get into what we do some more. So I am actually uh, uh, been with Steelcase for uh, seven years. I've got 28 years in different industries. I've had the opportunity of, uh, because of manufacturing, living in Canada, the United States, France, and Australia. Uh, so it's taken me around the globe. And uh, really, uh, I'm just absolutely blessed to work for Steelcase, which is a great people-centered company. Um, Tracy has had the opportunity of working at uh, Steelcase for 26 years. And uh, she's a Grand Valley State University graduate, so she's, uh, you know, our, our uh, hometown uh, experience here and talent. And both of us exist for the same reason, even though I'm responsible for lean quality, she's responsible for human resources. All of our leaders feel responsibility for uh, developing and cultivating talent. So we exist for our people, even though we produce products and solutions for our customers. Great, thanks. And just some more fun facts about Steelcase. As I mentioned, 1912, we were founded. Uh, we have about uh, 800 dealers that uh, we do business with. These are companies that exist to find customers and address their needs. And then they work through Steelcase for us to produce and provide those solutions to them. Um, we are a very innovative company. Uh, we believe the next great idea can come from anyone. And we have more than uh, 1,700 uh, unique patents uh, to our credit. Uh, we have about $3.7 billion in revenue last year. So we're a, a very large uh, company. And we have 13 global manufacturing locations. We exist in Mexico, the United States, uh, France, Spain, uh, Germany, Czech Republic, uh, India, Malaysia, China. And then we have other um, partners uh, or acquisitions that exist in other parts of the globe. And then we have an entire vended finished goods supply base that provides products from all over the world also. Um, we served more than 110,000 different companies that did business with us in the last five years. And we have a very strong employee base. We have more than 12,000 employees worldwide, and we continue to be the number one industry leader in uh, office furniture. And some exposure into some of our products on the next slide. 
um, you get some insights into what you may be thinking about office furniture is actually may actually be very different as to what exists out there today. So you can see there is it's not just uh, uh, people think of metal. Um, we have wood. Uh, we have uh, recycled materials that we use, uh, different types of uh, chemistry in our products, depending on which markets we serve. We're in healthcare, education, the office environment. We're even out in construction sites where companies use our products as they're uh, building their product structure, their, um, their building structures. Um, seating products we're very well known for. And we even get into things like privacy screens. So you're going to see a mix of what we call me work and we work areas. Me work is where I need to put my head down and get some work done. We work is where I might need to collaborate with someone else, problem solve. So quite a diversity. And then if you go to the next slide in, uh, in our uh, European, Middle East and Africa area, very similar. Uh, we've got um, screens at the top there that are for acoustics. So we're appreciative that people want to be able to work in a relatively quiet environment. And sometimes there could be noise. So these dampening devices of materials. Um, down on the bottom left, you can see one of these we areas where we have a bench, workbench, where four people can work in the same area if they're doing similar work. We even get into things like lounge seating that you see on the right-hand side, where maybe it uh, makes sense for a couple of people to sit down and just talk and, and, uh, and uh, discuss a topic in a very friendly setting. So um, we get products from partners. Bolivia, Bolivia is a partner of ours. And uh, so we manufacture a lot of products ourselves, but we have other companies that help us too. And I mentioned we're very focused on uh, on innovation. Well, um, you see up on the top, we've got uh, glass encased areas. So we actually produce these in Alabama. Uh, you can see in there, it comes with the whole suite of some of our, uh, what we call smart and connected devices. So you're able to look into a screen, very similar to Zoom, where you can do business with anyone anywhere in the world. Uh, you see things like uh, stools and benches. Down on the bottom left, though, we even get into things like a lithium battery powering. So that's a flex mobile power station on the left. Those little, uh, looks like tea kettles, those are lithium batteries that sit on mats. Uh, and these mats are actually charging those batteries. We believe in mobile work. Um, so people just don't sit at their desks anymore. Work has to move around. So a lot of our furniture is on wheels and carts and things like that. And then uh, we have areas where more casual setting. Sometimes you need to talk about things as a team. So you can see some of the lounge seating that's in the bottom right. An interesting fact too, we have partnerships. Uh, some of that furniture you're seeing in the bottom right is from uh, West Elm. Um, so some of you may have West Elm furniture in your homes. We're actually a partner with them. They inform us of things that uh, people may need in their products and we inform them on our manufacturing capabilities and have a really good partnership. And we're also partners with Microsoft. So we get involved in a lot of technology products too. And final look at some of our products, uh, even this idea of indoor and outdoor, it really depends on where work is being done. So we uh, actually uh, work in the outdoor furniture area too. Um, on the bottom left, you can see more of the phone booth type products that we get from uh, the United Kingdom called Orange Box. Provides a nice intimate setting for maybe having private conversations. And then on the bottom right, we listen to our customers. We innovate around what our customers tell us. And so if you look closely, you'll see that if you're sitting in that chair, you can actually swing your legs and not hit your legs on any table legs. So uh, we actually work on innovative products that meet our customers' needs too. So finally, I'll just give you a little bit of information about our presence in Grand Rapids on the next slide. Um, we have three manufacturing locations here, Grand Rapids Wood, Kentwood, and Kentwood Seating. And uh, we employ uh, about 2,000 people in the Grand Rapids area just in manufacturing. We have more than that when you think of the other functions. In our square footage, uh, we have more than 2,200 square feet of manufacturing space in the area. And we produce anything from seating products to desks, to cabinets, to a whole bunch of wood products in the area. So quite a diverse um, product offering. What I'd like to do now is uh, share a video with you to give you some insights into who we are and what our culture is. This uh, video focuses on problem solving, but I think you can get a pretty good idea of how we care for people, involve people, and um, try to make it a great workplace for everyone. Problem solving is the foundation of continuous improvement because if you believe in continuous improvement and you're always trying to make something better, so there's always a problem to solve. Problems that we know about that come to the surface is an opportunity for us to pull the team together and to innovate 
a new way to do the work. Being involved in problem solving gives them a voice simply because they can speak to whatever concerns they have. They can offer whatever ideas they may have to solve those problems. Especially in manufacturing, you have to be creative because a lot of processes are so ingrained in a culture or ingrained in what they've been doing and they've been doing it so long that if you can't come out with a different approach and kind of look at it from a different perspective, you're never going to get a different result. As an engineer, I can know the process upside down, but the people that are working day by day with the same uh, processes, they are the ones that can tell me how to improve them. They're the professionals on the floor, they know what goes on, they know everything best. Anytime you can have an employee solve their own problems, it benefits everybody on the team. It makes them more engaged, want to fix more issues, help others fix their issues. They've got to feel free to offer up input and feel that what they're saying is being heard. You're really not going to get this uh, from a desk or from a computer. You have to go to the area, and work as a team, and implement the proper solution. One of my high-low drivers, Phil, it took him four minutes on average to find a piece in this warehouse. He got frustrated, and I'm like, at the end of the day, I'll get somebody to cover your route, and then we'll tackle this warehouse. We cut that pick time down to like 45 seconds. So we cut almost three minutes and 15 seconds off of his day-to-day -day pick. You just have to listen and make an improvement and make an improvement and make an improvement. Steelcase not only allows us but encourages us to go ahead and solve these kinds of problems. We look to our Pareto charts to tell us what the, the biggest offender is in the area and we try to work on that. If it's not a safety problem, then you just start evaluating, is this creating a lot of scrap? Is it costing the company a lot of money? Is it costing me a lot of problems? It's not that you're the one that can always solve it, but it's about the people that you can involve. No one person is a superhero. We're all in it together. We always want to make our products better, our processes better, ourselves better. Looking at things and seeing this may cause an issue in the future. This may be an issue as far as quality, getting the product out on time. Following our processes the way that we've designed them and then escalating issues using good data matters. It allows us to focus our problem solving efforts and take our performance to the next level. That's how we remain competitive. That's how customers at the end of the day choose Steelcase. Twenty-five quadrillion possible products that we can make. It's the people, and Tracy, I'd like to talk a little bit about the talent. So, thanks, Chris. One of the things that Chris had mentioned was that Steelcase is over a hundred years old, and that makes us sound super, super old. But I guess what I would also say also means we've had to reinvent ourselves. Nothing that's a hundred years old stays exactly the same, and I think a huge reason for that is the people. Um, the people that come and join our company are interested, they're curious, um, they're interested in solving problems and how to make things better. What I love about manufacturing is we're not looking for people to come who have tons of experience in manufacturing or understand lean and all the fancy lingo. We can teach all of those things. We're looking for people who want to come to work every single day and be part of something bigger. They want to help grow themselves. They want to learn new things and have a natural curiosity. So we talked a little bit about it. Um, Steelcase starts at $15 an hour, tuition reimbursement, all that, all this stuff that you would expect from an employer. But I think the biggest thing that I would want to share with people is come and bring your curiosity and your interest in learning something new. So thanks for the time. Thank you, Tracy, and thank you, Chris. We appreciate that. So we will move on to Robin. So Robin from Precision Aerospace, good morning. So Hi, how are you? To hearing, good, looking forward to hearing what you have to tell us. Yeah, I'm excited to offer the opportunity to share with everyone um, what it is that we do. So I'm going to share our screen right now. Um, my name is Robin Sem. I'm the HR manager for Precision Aerospace here in Grand Rapids. And I have over 30 years experience in human resources. 
Um, my focus has been, you know, primarily generalist, but I do employee relations, uh, employee growth and development, and then recruiting. Um, I'm going to share this time with uh, one of our other members of the team, which is Nolan Marcus. Uh, he is our current director of engineering. Uh, and Nolan's a great example of the opportunities that are provided, not only within Precision Aerospace, but I'm sure all of the other organizations that you're seeing here today, which is the opportunity to grow. Uh, Nolan joined our organization right out of college and has progressed through a few different disciplines and several different positions. So I'm going to turn it over to Nolan and he can talk to you about our organization. Thank you, Robin. Um, yeah, so as Robin said, I'm currently Director of Engineering, um, but I've been at PAC for 16 years. Uh, I started as a project engineer, um, and then I've worked through the uh, organization as into operations, quality, engineering. So I've seen all of the different areas um, and have worked with many different people and roles uh, within, the, within PAC. Um, on the screen there you see we are owned by Tribus Aerospace. Uh, they have three facilities across the U.S. Um, so one in San Diego for AM&T. Um, Midwest Precision is outside of Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, and then Precision Aerospace PAC uh, is in Grand Rapids, Michigan here. Uh, we are just south of the airport um, off 52nd Street. Um, so we are a contract manufacturer, like you've heard a couple of the other um, businesses. Um, we operate 24-7 um, and we machine large, um, you know, five-axis complex housings um, about the size of a basketball all the way down to, you know, small fuel, um, fuel components uh, for jet engines and it would be about the size of an eraser on your pencil. Um, we're, you know, 83,000 square feet um, and when I started um, 16 years ago, it was about a 50-person uh, shop, and currently we're at about 140. Just an overview of what we do in terms of uh, type tolerance, aircraft controls, um, and uh, jet systems. Um, we work in a whole bunch of different materials, uh, anything from aluminum. Um, and then up to uh, high nickel alloys um, that are in jet engines, so wasp alloy and has Hastex and Inconel, um, things that you don't normally hear about, but uh, we deal with every day. Um, and our products end up with, um, you know, Lockheed Martin on the F-35 or, or Airbus on the A-350. So we, we see both defense and commercial. Um, so it's a very diverse um, market share that we have. Uh, this is some of the components we do. Um, as, as I said, complex five-axis impellers up on the left top there, um, all the way down to aluminum housings um, that are part of the pump hydraulic pumps uh, on the a -Bus, uh, Airbus A350. Um, so, again, a, a very big range of products that we do here. Uh, this is our Swiss turn departments. Um, as you saw at a, on a previous slide, um, you know, it's um, small uh, screw products that we make for the aircraft uh, industry. Um, and we also get into the fuel side and jet engine um, fuel nozzles. Um, as you see, it's very well lit and clean, um, and you know the shop because of the cl uh, close tolerances that we do every day. Um, we keep it at 70 degrees year round, so very uh, nice place to work and um, you know tight tolerance. The two blue machines that are in the middle there on the back um, are Cublex Matsuras, um, 32 pallets. So we actually only staff these one shift uh, out of the three shifts per day and they run unattended so there's a ton of engineering that goes into these um, but when an operator comes in they're loading and unloading basically for an entire day um, and that'll run so you can see 
you know, a couple of the complex manifolds um, that end up as part of hydraulic systems uh, on airplanes. Um, so we'd like to go into the video now to show, um, you know, the people that we have here and the teamwork that we have um, to run these high complex and low volume parts. Precision Aerospace is a U.S. owned and operated division of Tribus Aerospace. Our business is focused on aerospace and defense markets with secondary production and industrial medical market. We provide complex precision machine components and assemblies to commercial aerospace and defense platforms. Across Precision Aerospace, we strive each day to make a positive difference in the lives of our commercial airspace customers by producing complex machine components for Boeing, Airbus, Bombardier, and other commercial aircraft. People are counting on us to help them fly safely. We deliver products every day to keep people flying. We provide solutions for numerous defense platforms. Our precision machine components provide critical contributions to the effective operation of our military aircraft and ground vehicles. We are proud to be key contributors to our armed forces. While we may focus on aerospace and defense markets, we also provide precision machine components to our medical industry customers. We're proud to machine key components for ventilators. The machining expertise of our team members ensure these life-saving devices performance designed and help medical personnel save lives. We currently use 3D printing to speed up our product development time. In the future, 3D printing will allow us to print parts we currently cannot physically machine. In the future, metal 3D printing allows us to reduce material waste, reduce the use of special fixtures needed to cut metal in a CNC machine, and increase the geometric possibilities. We are proud of our team members. They are essential to the work we do and are the source of the value we deliver to our customers. Manufacturing is an essential part of the U.S. economy. A majority of all research and development in the U.S. is performed by manufacturers. That's what keeps our country growing and prospering. It's good for our economy and it improves our quality of life. In our business, what we do helps protect our country and ensure safe air travel. You don't need a lot of experience coming in the door. You need to be self-motivated to work hard every day. I like working at Precision Aerospace because of the many opportunities they have available. The work I do is challenging, but I enjoy that. It gets stressful at times. The biggest stress is knowing that I am certifying parts that go on airplanes. I've worked in several different areas of the Precision Aerospace in my career. My current job is a certified level two NDT technician requiring over 400 hours of on-the-job training and in-depth testing process. All this was provided by the company. I worked at Precision Aerospace as an engineering intern through the co-op program at my college, Grand Valley State University. I can do a large variety of work in my job, which can be both a good and bad thing. There's always something new to learn, but I don't always know if I'm on the right track. Everyone is very helpful though. If I ever have a question or need help on a project, I know that anyone I ask will be willing to provide support. I started with Precision Aerospace while I was still in college pursuing an IT degree. In most roles at Precision Aerospace, it's important to be adaptive and always be looking for ways to do things better. Each job may be different, but having good attention to detail and ability to work in a fast-paced environment are essential. Many manufacturing and skilled trades careers are high-paying jobs that don't require you to complete a four-year degree to begin making a living. As long as you have a sense of curiosity, enjoy working with your hands, want to know how things work and have an eye for detail, you can start your career right out of high school. Whether you are college or trade school bound or not, there's something for everyone. I would like to finish up um, with just some information about some in-demand jobs that are um, right now happening in our area. Um, specifically, we're looking for CNC programmers or what we call process engineers um, and then CMM programmers. So these are the positions that actually um, tell the machines what to do or how to make or measure the parts. Um, so they're using uh, G-code dialect to write instructions. Uh, the software they end up using are CAD, CAM, G-code editing, and simulation type software. Uh, these jobs, you know, really require the ability to, you know, understand and read blueprints or drawings. Um, you're going to have to know how to use certain tools, dials, and indicators, uh, understand geometric dimensioning and tolerances. Uh, once you get into this 
field or position, you're going to understand the different machines that a company has available, as well as what the capabilities are, what kind of tools or cutters um, can be used in those machines, and then what are the feed and speeds of the cutters and the various uh, materials that um, you're cutting. And then in addition, you have to know how to do work holding and fixturing, uh, which is how to hold the parts within the machine um, to, to manufacture what you're looking for. Problem solving is, is big curiosity, math and technical skills. So the more of that that you can get and develop in high school, the better off you're gonna be coming out of high school. So I wanna thank you for the opportunity to introduce you to our organization. Um, and I hope you get a lot out of uh, this manufacturing week and you realize just what it is to uh, go into a manufacturing career. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Noel, and I appreciate it. I know we had a lot to get in there and we have a minute left. I am going to, um, for your students, there's many of our panelists are already um, answering your questions online. Um, we do have Obid also, I believe, or he was there. So if there's a particular question for Obid, um, feel free to put that in the Q&A box um, and they're gonna be working on that. So we will hang on probably maybe five extra minutes um, to answer those questions. Um, but what I am going to do too right now is in case you do have to go is kind of give you a couple of final, um, final things just so you know that when you do close out, we do have that survey we want you to, um, to fill out for us. Let us know how we did as well. We do have six $500 scholarships that are for students who are seniors who are interested in going into careers in manufacturing. That is also on the, um, on the survey, so please look at that. Your teachers also have that information. And finally, all of these webinars will be uploaded to a YouTube channel, our Discover Manufacturing YouTube channel, so you can watch this again. So please check this one out again and others as well. So um, on closing, I'm gonna ask each of you just one quick question um, that I, I had received. So Steve, um, my first question to you is, let me just see which one is the best one. Um, what's the likelihood of getting involved in some of your programs that there at um, and in mobile, mobile Solutions? You can keep them muted and you can just send the candidates my way. It's okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that sounds good. Actually, you know what? We kind of had a very similar question. So as you work together, to tell us a little bit about how they get involved in these programs and how likely it is to be, to be selected in the program itself. Yeah. No, honestly, Steve and I are both, um, again, we're always looking for students to join our programs um, and the likelihood is very high, very high for both of us. So I think Steve's nodding his head. He can at least give us the visuals that I'm, I'm right on. Our programs are very closely tied. Um, in fact, a lot of our classes are held together. Um, our instructor, Andy Beach, does a great job um, in that with the classes that we hold, not only are they particular at AutoCAD Medical, but he also references the NN side as well to make sure that what you learn in class is applicable back to the business. So Steve and I are always fighting for talent. So with that said, there's um, endless opportunities for students to join our apprentice program. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So um, Robin, I'm going to ask you what, um, what see, I had a question. Um, what, is it, what actions do you think it takes for people to be successful in manufacturing? Uh, I think really it's just being, you know, every one of us said the same thing, having curiosity, being flexible, being open. Um, you know, you just never know what each day is going to bring. And so if you're open to learning, if you're telling your supervisor, hey, I'd love to try that, or I want to learn how to do this, you're going to get those opportunities um, every chance you can. Okay, great. Um, and this will go for either Chris or, or Tracy. Um, the question is, how do you move higher in Steelcase? Yeah, so first of all, the curiosity, our values, living our values, but asking questions, being motivated. If you see an opportunity where there's, uh, we can improve, speaking up, being a part of the problem solving. We're a very inclusive culture. So uh, whether you're somebody that's you know, has a math background and an English background. It doesn't matter about your background. We really think the next great idea can come from anybody. And I, I had posted too, our global vice president of manufacturing started on the plant floor. So, you know, the question about, well, do I need to have a college degree or, you know, two degrees or if you perform, you'll work your way through. All right. Awesome, everyone. Well, thank you. Thank you, students. If you want to stay on, like I said, I asked our panelists for those who can stay on for a few extra minutes 
to answer those questions um, in the chat box, and then we will turn the the, uh, the webinar off. We will I will also be sending all of our panels emails. So in case there is a question that didn't get answered to you, that it will be sent to your teachers and educators, and they can send that email to you um, if you have a specific question to any of our panelists. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, and panelists, I appreciate your time this morning as well. Appreciate it, thank Carol. You. Thank you. Thank you.